Davidson, but Italians also invented a two-wheeled wonder called the Vespa. Vespa is one of those words in our language. Look in a dictionary under scooter and you'll find a drawing of a Vespa. So a scooter is a Vespa and a Vespa is a scooter. Here's Roger Kennedy. After World War II, many people in industrial countries aspired to have their own motor vehicles, but big cars carried big tickets. So the Germans produced a cheap, reliable people's car, the Volkswagen. And the Italians came up with a two-wheeled equivalent, a motorbike with a radical new design. It was created by an aircraft designer with a body without a chassis and a tiny motor sort of like a power lawnmower. Serious motorcyclists said the Vespa design wasn't really serious. But the Vespa motor became popular in England and Europe because it was convenient and cheap, and it even became fashionable. of Europe wouldn't be the same without them. Take away the scooters and the people who ride them, and you take away fumes, noise, and the chic. The scooters and mopeds of cities like Milan are as much a part of Italy as cappuccino and pasta. Just ask someone like Marco Nuti from the Piaggio Company in Italy, the makers of the famous Vespa. It's a good question. So, uh, some people think that there is round shape is like uh, uh, a shape of the woman. Guarda, guarda. The appeal of these snappy little machines may be part fashion, but it's also 50 years of experience. The Vespa design hasn't changed much since 1946. The welded steel frame, stressed steel body, aerodynamic shape, one-piece engine gearbox unit, and aircraft-type wheels were the brainchild of the Piaggio aeronautical engineer, Corradino Dascagno. He made uh, many inventions, basically in the field, in the aeronautical field, maybe of uh, uh, propeller for aircraft, as well as uh, on the, the, the other parts for helicopter and so on. And uh, you can uh, see some, uh, some uh, aeronautical uh, uh, parts in Vespa, that is the front wheel is uh, typical of aeronautical uh, gear of airplane design. The Piaggio company began building railway carriages in the early 1900s, then moved into the aeronautics business, producing aircraft like these, and the engines that powered them in the late 20s and early 30s. Motor-driven bikes and scooters enjoyed a burst of popularity in the early 1900s, particularly among women riders. Interest waned until 1946, when Carodino Descagno designed the Wasp, or Vespa in Italian. Three years later, the Douglas Company began manufacturing Vespas under license in England. A former company employee and scooter historian, Eric Brockway, remembers the early surge in popularity. It was um, quite remarkable, really and truly, the numbers of people who used a Vespa for, as a means of traveling abroad. Uh, and one of the advantages is that you could go anywhere in the world, anywhere in the world, um, and obtain spare parts and service because the machine was made under license and it was identical to any other machine that you could get. All, all the component parts and so on and so forth were interchangeable. In the 1960s, thousands of scooters from Vespa and other manufacturers like Lambretta appeared on the roads of England and Europe. Special events like trials riding and scooter ball became popular. Very English. A race with passengers balancing a cup of tea. Scootering won the hearts and minds of 1960s mod Europeans, including the musician Mickey Stannard and his band Mickey Finn.
today, Mickey Stannard is 48, and his band is making a comeback. Scootering, he says, is still his number one passion. It's a great buzz, you know. We go down the roads and uh, we, know a lot, we, we turn a lot of heads. And that, that's still good, you know, because you, you know you're passing people who years ago was into it, yeah? And they're looking at your bike and they say, it's a great buzz, it's a great feeling, you know? The uh, public like to feel that they were riding what the stars rode and, and, and uh, uh, not exactly aping them, but um, it certainly it wasn't out of place. And, and uh, there were lots of film stars and, and lots of... Um, sports personalities who rode Vespers that would never have ridden any other two-wheel vehicle and uh, they weren't uh, considered to be uh, uh, out of place on it. When it comes to style, Mickey Stannard says scooters leave motorcycles and their riders way behind. Ooh, well, where motorbikes are concerned, uh, for me, it's a lot cleaner. Anything goes wrong, it's normally a spark plug or a little wire comes out. You know, they're great guys, some of the rockers and all that on their motorbikes, but at the end of the day, they're, they're, they're a little bit dirty. You know, I suppose looking back, the mods are a little bit prima donnas, they, they love their clothes. We don't get a lot of grease over ourselves, you know, it's, it's, that's, that's the basic difference for me. The scooters of the 90s are complete with fuel injection systems, electrical starters, and advanced composite body panels. Mechanically, yeah, they're great, but uh, they don't do nothing for me. They're, they're all, they're plastic. That's the best I'm saving, really. We have a scooter with a plastic body, so, uh, and we have a scooter with uh, uh, many technical, new technical solutions, like uh, disc brakes, uh, like uh, new engine, and uh, new instrumentation, panel, and so on. But we believe also in uh, a, a, um, the classic solution of scooter that is with basically the same shape of Vespa, even uh, maybe ch we can change something, but the shape has to remember always the, the, the original shape, uh, the original concept of Vespa. Piaggio and other companies experiment with machines like this one. Classic Vespa is as popular as ever. Last year, 10 million of them were sold worldwide.